Hi friends, Miss Elena here. I know it's been a long time, but it's Christmas now, and I wanna share one of my favorite stories with you guys. Today I'm gonna to read How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Every who down in Whoville like Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now please, don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the hoops. Staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm, lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every who down in Whoville beneath was busy now, paying a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their snackings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming, I must find a way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow, he knew, all the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise, oh, the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he heard, the noise, 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 noise. Then the Who, young and old, would sit down to a feast. They'd feast. And they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. They would feast on who pudding and rare who roast beef, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand at the least. And then they'd do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand and the Who's would start singing. They'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years, I've put up with it now. I must stop Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do, the Grinch laughed in his throat, and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and clucked, what a great Grinchy trick. With this coat and this hat, I look just like Saint Nick. All I need is a reindeer, the Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was not one to be found. But did that stop the Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max and he took some red thread and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh and he hitched it up old Max. Then the Grinch said, giddy up. And the sleigh started down toward the home where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. All their windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air. All the Who's were dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, this is stop number one, the old Grinch claws hissed, and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two. Then he stuck his head out the fireplace flue where the little who stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first thing to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room and he took every present pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn and plums. Then he stuffed them in bags, 
Then the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the Who's Feast. He took the Who Pudding. He took the Roast Beast. He cleared out the icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last can of Who Hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And then the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove when he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small who. Little Cindy Lou who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter who'd got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know that old Grinch was smart and so slick. He thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there and I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child and he patted her head and he got her a drink and sent her to bed. When Cindy Lou who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log for the fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On the walls, he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other whose houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other whose mouses. It was a quarter past dawn and the who's still abed. All the who's still snooze when he packed up his sled. Packed up their presents, the ribbons, the wrapping, the tags and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. 3,000 feet up the side of Mr. Crumpet or Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the who's was he was grinchily humming. They they're finding out now no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the Who's down in Whoville will cry, boo hoo. That's noise, said the grin the Grinch. That, m that simply must, that I simply must hear. So he paused and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started up in low and then started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why the sound? Why it's the sound? It's quite merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, very. He stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas. Of, he hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came somehow or other. It came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled. Three hours till this puzzle was sore. Then the Grinch thought something he hadn't thought before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute he, his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light and he brought back the toys and the food for the feast and he, he himself, the Grinch carved the roast beast. The end. Merry Christmas, everyone.